This is the ultimate guide for one-on-one -on -one soccer skills. In this video, I'll show you how to beat defenders in 1v1 situations, the best 1v1 soccer moves that you should use in matches, how to practice one-on-one -on -one soccer training drills by yourself, and tons of other advice to give you more confidence in 1v1 situations so you can beat more defenders the next time you play. So first of all, when you get this, analyze the space. As that ball is coming to you, before it's coming to you, you already know, okay, he's off me. As soon as I get that, I see the runs are coming in the box. Well, if I have time, I'm just going to play it. Or I'm going to get it on my right foot, and I'm just going to play it into the box. Okay, so realize that your job as the winger in this area is not necessarily to beat the guy. It's to deliver the cross. Now, if the cross has to come early because your teammates are making the run or the space is there, then take that option. If, however, your teammates haven't gotten into the box, no one's making good runs, there's no options, well, now you're in a situation where, yes, I may have to beat this guy, so now I can get my head up, I can get a better angle, and I can make a, a better decision and give it a better quality cross. So I want you to use moves, but I want you to use them when they're necessary. So a lot of players, they might be marked by this guy. Maybe the ball's coming across in the midfield. They're the winger, they're the wide player. They're receiving it like here. Well, he's already on top of me. He might get on top of my touch. He might force me to go backwards. I don't have the time and space to put in the cross or to go at him with speed. You want to think about getting space for yourself. So as that boat's coming across, instead of trying to receive it here, I want to check out here. So now I have space to either put in that cross or I can go at him with speed and make my decision. So think about getting a little space for yourself. Now, when that ball does come to you, play me again. If I'm deciding that I'm going to go at him because I know it's not the right time to cross, my teammates aren't in the box, then I'm gonna do that without hesitation. I already know, boom, I wanna get at him. So I'm going without hesitation. I'm not receiving the ball, play me one more time. I'm not coming here, receiving the ball, now getting my head up, now, okay, uh, hesitating, hesitating. Uh, okay, he's closed me down. And even if I do beat him, where am I going? He's right on top of me. So go without hesitation. Think about getting your space for yourself, analyzing, is it the right time to cross or should I make a move in this situation? So the number one rule when you're taking someone on, do not hesitate. Hesitation will get you tackled. So if I'm in this situation with him and I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know where to go, I'm allowing him to close me down, he becomes in control. And so the longer you take to make a move, the more he becomes in control. If I just go without hesitation, okay, now I'm in control. And even if your skills are poor, even if you have really bad dribbling or a bad touch, if you go at him without hesitation, you will be successful. Okay, if I let him get set, he's lowered to the ground, he's ready to turn, he's ready to react. But if I just go, I don't let him get set, I'm gonna beat him simply with speed and no hesitation. It's very direct. I don't have to do all this and try to nutmeg him or put it over his head, okay? Grab that for me. I don't have to do all these skills. I can just touch it to the left, to the right, and go with pace. So even if you're not the fastest player, like I said, don't hesitate, be direct. <laughs> You'll get space. You'll get space to put in a cross. You'll get space to create a pass for yourself or get a shot on goal. And what I would suggest, if the space is there, just dribble into the space. But if he's not letting me get into the space, that's different. Now I might have to shift him one way and create space for myself. I'm not so concerned about him. I'm more concerned about the space I want to attack. When I pick up the ball, I'm just trying to sprint to the net as quickly as possible and I'll dodge everyone along the way. 
And I think a lot of us get in this situation and we overcomplicate it. We think we have to embarrass them or we think we have to do moves when in reality, if we're just very quick with our decision making, we dribble into space. If we have to shift him in one direction or another, we will. What if I try to take him on and I can't get past him? Okay, so let's say we went down the line here and we get in this situation. What do I do now? What a lot of players do is we stop here and now we get stuck. And now again, he becomes in control. He might be a big, strong defender. Suddenly he pushes me off the ball. So if you try to dribble and it doesn't work, just turn, just keep moving, do not stop. So something like this, if I wanna come down here, didn't work, that's all right. He comes inside, didn't work, just turn, just keep moving, just keep the ball moving and you're gonna make it much more difficult for him to tackle. With that in mind, here are eight skill moves you can use to beat more defenders. Move number one is just a simple change of direction. Instead of always worrying about the defender, just focus on attacking the space. If you can learn to simplify your dribbling, you're gonna beat more players right away. You can take this move to the next level by changing your pace as well as your direction. Move number three is an outside skip. This is a move I use all the time when I'm playing. And instead of the change of direction where you were taking your touch at about a 45 degree angle, here you're going at a 90 degree angle and you're basically avoiding the lunge of the defender. So getting away from him and then quickly moving past him. Number four, La Croqueta. This was made famous by Iniesta a few years ago, but you see players use it all the time. Basically, it's a very quick touch from your left to right or right to left foot. Again, you're trying to avoid the lunge of the defender's tackle. Do it quickly, you're basically passing that ball as quickly as you can from one foot to the other. Number five is a single body feint. So you're basically making a hard step beside the ball. Now you're not just stepping, you're trying to shake the defender with your movement. So really throw the defender with your leg, with your body, and even your eyes. Move number six is taking the last move to the next level. It's just a double body feint. So again, you're really stepping hard to each side of the ball, trying to shift the defender, get him off balance, and then quickly accelerating into the space you have created. Move number seven is a step over. Similar to the body feint, here you're putting your foot around the ball. Again, you wanna shift the defender with your foot, with your body and your eyes. Really get him off balance and then you're gonna quickly explode in the opposite direction. The final move is a double step over. You wanna to try to do your step overs as quickly as possible while keeping good control and good balance but you really wanna force your defender to move and adjust to your movements. So remember, it's not just putting your foot around the ball, it's really selling your feints. Remember the importance of being an effective dribbler. I want you to realize that being a good dribbler is more about the mindset than the actual skills. Obviously, you need to have good touch and good technique, but you need to have that mindset that when you get that ball at your feet, you are attacking with purpose and pace. A lot of times you don't even need moves. You just need to attack that space and force defenders to chase you rather than worrying about them. So the first thing I want to say or the first tip I want to give you is always use both feet. As you can see in this video and all of my videos, I'm always using both feet. A lot of you are complaining that your weak foot isn't strong enough. The truth is you are not using it enough. So whenever you're practicing, always use both feet and eventually you will have two strong feet. Next thing I want you to think about is the speed at which you're doing these drills. Try to do them as quick as possible. If you're just jogging through the cones, you really aren't challenging yourself. You're not making it realistic. You should be getting tired. You should be losing control of the ball at some points. So really keep up the speed. It will benefit you. It will improve your skill, but it will also improve your fitness. Next thing I want you to think about is those small little touches whenever you're moving forward. So it's really important that you always keep the ball really close to you. Just think about Messi, those little touches on his left foot. How many touches does he get in a short period? The ball is always within his control. So don't let the ball get away from you. Finally, the last tip I want you to focus on is getting really low to the ground, bending your knees whenever you change direction. So whether you are beating a defender or you're just going in the opposite direction, focus on getting lower. This will help you be more explosive. And I just wanted to show you this clip because this is what I was doing between each drill. Just a little. 
If you would like to have more confidence in one-on-one -on -one situations, beat players with more consistency, and have no hesitation when you're on the field, I want you to practice this dribbling or soccer move routine for the next week. Very simple, five different moves. All I want you to do is 20 repetitions, 10 going each direction, 10 going to the left, 10 going to the right. You can use a minute of rest between each exercise if you need it. If you want to challenge yourself and get some fitness out of this as well, eliminate the rest.